Mary show. show. Just, just to let you know, that's right. Well, hello, Mary. Tonight at Larry's, Black Pepper and yours truly catch up to discuss the journey so far. So sit back, grab a drink, as we look at the first pilot with Mouse and the last ever London session with this Ibs. This is the Larry show. show. Just, just to let you know. What, 14 on, <laughs> on site in Greenwich? We would literally be talking about, well, first of all, we are talking like, kind of in a, a way, two old school heads talking negatively about the state of the current scene. I was, which, was I talking after? Well, yeah, I was. No, after. I think you were listening. I was probably talking. No, <laughs> I think, you know, I think that we, we were just having opinions on certain things, the way things are, the way things were. And, um, well, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know what? It's like, it's like having the opportunity for everybody to, to have their chat, to have their talk, to have their time, yeah, to have yeah. their 15, 20 minutes. Give people the right to talk for themselves, yeah. to speak about what they want to speak about in the way they want to talk about it, you know, not somebody else. Because there's, um, there's a lot of stuff that like, gets put out that people make on behalf of the people, sometimes without their consent. Right. And it's their own opinion of the way that person was, you know. And, Obviously, opinions seem to dictate a lot of what some people believe to be reality. So I guess that was the driving force. But it's funny that, you know, if I think back to that, and to be honest, like the energy that we had even before on site together was pretty strong. So working together and meeting each other at seven in the morning, hanging out all day, going to bars after work just to have a little like nightcap, you know, before going home, <laughs> that kind of. That kind of led to us spending a lot of time focused on building on this idea, you yeah. know, that was literally like, like you said, from the most humblest of the beginnings, man, like there was no real agenda as there is still no agenda. You know, it is just literally d documenting fact, you know, yeah. when we did the first episode of Larry's day one, <laughs> day one, let's have fun. You know, that's kind of how it was, wasn't it? Like, yeah. I remember uh, like having to put tea in our, in our bottles of booze because we were getting a little bit too licked up you know <laughs> mouse mouse sat in the chair for a little while with you i think he sat in the chair with you yeah that's a shame that wasn't filmed actually that was a perfect interview a natural interview you know a, a conversation that was that would have been great captured then i sat in the chair with him and it was so artificial and so so false so wrong so erison b-boy mouse welcome to larry's What's homie good Thank you, yeah. my pleasure, homie. Always. Always, yeah, man. This is uh, it's our secret spot. Yeah. <laughs> it's our secret spot. The den. There's a lot of people that will know you for who you are as a current dancer. Some will know you for past achievements. Some will know you simply from being the little kid that was running around back home in the Philippines. So, yeah. you know, in a, I guess in a short way, just to give people a bit of an idea, you know, Born and raised in the Philippines. Uh, moved to the UK. Um, what, when, when was that? 96, November 3. 96? Exactly, yeah. Okay. And what was, the, what was the whole thing of coming to the UK? Was it, you know, opportunities or was, was family moving? Like, what, what, what brought you here? Um, the, uh, I came over here because of uh, my mother, firstly. Um, she took us here so we can have uh, more opportunity in life. Mm -hmm. As uh, everybody knows, like Philippines is like a third world country. Um, it's not poor, but it's just like when you're born into like uh, a certain um, status of society, yeah. it's, it's harder to um, get an opportunity for what you want to do in life and stuff, you know. I came over here to, to basically work for my uncle and study and uh, um, I did that. I, I, I got to finish um, a course of uh, as a chef. Okay. Because my uncle uh, put me into school to to work in his restaurant and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It gave me a lot of opportunity coming over here, but it doesn't mean that like like I don't miss my country, you know. Like no, Philippines course, is like the best. The, the best. Like, like for me, obviously, I'm born there, and that's the thing that that created the person that I am. Harrison yeah, yeah, yeah. is a, uh, I'm a family person, you know. Yeah. I have uh, two kids that's like almost graduating, one in college, uh, one in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, but um, a lot of people just know me as a, as a dancer. Yeah. Uh, a b-boy that just like, performing everywhere. 
Where did you live when you first, when Luton. You first moved? Luton. I arrived Luton. in Luton, yeah. Okay. I was there for four months. It was pretty cool, but the first thing for me is like, where is the people? You know what I mean? I guess it, when you came here, where is the people? Where's like, yeah, it was people on the street. Oh, you okay. Know? Um, oh, less crowded. It's really like no people. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I arrived in Luton, in called, uh, Marsh Farm, um, the area that we lived in. Um, I stood, like, because it's snowing. The first thing, I, I, first time I saw snow, and I was like, what the hell? First it's, time? Yeah, first time ever, ever in my whole life. Ever. You know? We don't have snow in Philippines, man. It's like two seasons there, rainy season and, yeah, and yeah, sun, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but I came here, I saw that sh I was like, wow, what, what is this, you know. Yeah. I came out of uh, our house. This was like 8.30 in the evening, right? In Philippines, that's like full of people where I live, Manila. You can go out, the, uh, back home, you can never be bored hmm. being, being in... Um, in the Philippines, because if you are, if you're not doing any, if you finish what you're doing in the house, and you come out of your house. There's always people there that mm. you can always chat to. For me, it's really big culture shock that when I came over here, I was looking for that, and the only thing I see <laughs> is like that. white um, roads, like the cars are, are covered with snow and stuff, you know. And I stood in the middle of my uh, of our um, of our street, it's called Gardenia Avenue, for half an hour and just stood there like this, looking for anything that mm. moves. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> no cars, no people, and for mm. me, I, that's like a really, that's really crazy. Was that that's kind of a that's kind shock. of a beautiful moment actually? Yeah, or did man, it or, like, or were you shook? Huh? Like was it was it a pleasure I or just was like, you shook? No, for me, I was like, wow, <laughs> where where am I, man? What <laughs> yeah, am I, do you what came, am I doing? Man. Because in my head, I have to be like all this, you know. But yeah, 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 yeah. After yeah. that, like, um, we came to London. Then that's when I, I first that's saw, when, like... That, that's when it's another game like, wow, together, okay, isn't it? this is like, like Manila more. Yeah, this yeah, is like yeah, what yeah. Is go, where it's going on, you know. Yeah. used to go to a, um, a bar, a Filipino bar called um, a bar, uh, Bartolina. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it, it was in, it was in uh, West London. Yeah, but that's all I see, like, F Filipinos, Filipinos, all, all, ev everywhere, but the, it's different movement rather than, than the way it is back home. Yeah, yeah, everything, yeah. Everything seems to be like, no one wants to, to interact with you. Yeah, like, exactly. I found out, like, my, where my mother lives, it's been there for, she's been there for 10 years, and uh, uh, she knows her neighbors, but they never really, like, interact as yeah. well. As neighbors, you know. But you know that's the thing with dancing, though, man. Like it, it's like dancing gives you the the opportunity to uh, connect very easily to people. I, to be honest, I did dancing here just to like be in into the interact, into crap, yeah, into interact with the crowd and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, cause me, I'm, I'm a I'm a person that would like to go and just if, if I'm in the bus stop or I'm in the bus or in the tube. I always try to like yeah, say something I, and, and I, I talk I to people and stuff, you know what I mean? But Very familiar you know, with that. That's how it started breaking. Hmm. If somebody happens to be walking by, male or female, doesn't matter, like walking by and they look like a little sad or, or a little blue, you're notorious for, for bringing sunshine to those people, man. Like Everybody that, that walks past you, there's yeah. always something happening in their life and stuff you know yeah yeah, yeah. why yeah. not just trying to interact whatever negative or positive the way they um they say something they to you back even. you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, still acknowledge you as a as a positive and try to always just say yo how you doing well yeah like, interact you know walk of life with type of people that you meet you always experience and take something from that so when i saw um breaking i was like wow that's very very individual it's pretty nice to do and stuff. If you if you could if you could go back to it, the person that you was before you even got told by your mum that you're coming to the UK, mm. if you could go back to that person, could you say quite honestly that that person back there could ever see yourself being who you are today? Nah, man. I know. I learned that stuff from here, and then putting it back to the Philippines is uh, is just 
a thing that they, I have to do because I'm always thinking about that anyway. Yeah. You know, I'm working to to save up some money for a hip hop school in Philippines, man. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I started researching about the cost and the the things that we that I have to do to make the, make it sustained. Um, I got this basically this inspiration from uh, KK from um, Tiny Tunes. I met him this year um, when I was back in the Philippines. But um, I saw his, his uh, documentary before before that, you know. Um, so I wanted to do that because I think there's a lot of things that we can, like uh, that we we can give as an artist, you know. Not just me, a lot of people. If I have a hip hop school, then a lot of artists can come there and teach what they yeah. experience in life, you know. Yeah, man. That's that's the thing that I'm 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 doing right now. Um, work here here and, here and there, and just trying to survive. It's a very it, first yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a strange you know thing. What I mean? But then we did the machine interview, like literally about an hour after that. Yeah. And um, obviously we've dropped that one. That was the first one that went out. And when I look at that one now, I'm like, actually, that's not a bad little interview. There was no real structure um there wasn't any research because i know him but and i certainly don't know him enough to, to rule out research but you know i didn't really do any research it was just a chat and it and it flowed quite nice actually um but i didn't like that interview at the time because i was feeling like can we do this this is wrong why am i in the chair it was all this kind of weird stuff going on right. I'm a little bit drunk but then sunday the next day when we filmed Lil Bam, when he came through, and I'd never met him before. Like, right. I'd heard of him through you, but I'd never met him before. And for me, it was like, oh, man, this guy, it's going to be so hard to do. How am I going to do this? You know, I'm not going to be able to give him the respect he deserves. And then I met him, and we spoke for about an hour before, and it was just like he was the most natural, cuddly, warm energy dude you could ever imagine to meet, you know what I mean? And, and basically, that interview felt great because actually I thought, okay, I'm in the driving seat now, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to make sure that we put the effort into making this worthwhile, you know, people putting their energy in. I'll tell you one art form that I didn't really know a lot about until recently was from um, Ibs. Ibs, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, With like, the rocking, to, man. Yeah, yeah, the rocking. I didn't really know too much about rocking. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know. Obviously, you got your top rock before you hit the floor and stuff like yeah. that. And we just knew it was, you're just top rocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. see what I mean? I didn't know that that was a whole dance within itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until I actually mm. met Ibs and, and, and then Ibs started, like, like telling us, well, telling me about it. Do you mm. know what I mean? But that, that day was... Um, um, shedding a lot of light on on that kind of it's like a dying form in it like, yeah absolutely um, first and foremost Slammer, it's just a dance you know um everyone overcomplicates it if you're dope you practice if you're not dope you practice mm. both ways you, you keep on practicing it focuses your negative energy on something positive and that's what it's about it's supposed to be an addition to your life a lot of pe people take it too serious if you're going to change for the good out of dancing, then that's good. Mm. That's good. If you're going to use it to create beef and so forth, then you need to go and get some... Counterproductive. Yeah, it's counterproductive. You need to go and get some new hobbies, maybe badminton. Uh, that's or, a good one. Yeah, it's a really good one, you know, the shuttlecock. When you hit that shuttlecock, relief. Trust me. How I started. Um, I saw DJ Renegade during the days of Break Station 2004, 2005. He used to train us back in the day, and um, I saw him do a dance that was upstanding, and I was like, well, what's that dance? He showed me a couple of things. I drilled that for a long time. Then I met Dan Deuce, who, who then blessed me with a lot of knowledge, Slammer. He took some time to give me his footage, which I recorded off. Um, he gave me tapes, mm -hmm. and then I recorded the tapes off on, onto my camera, and I, I used to like just repeat, repeat those things, and gave me a, a nice master class at his home with all the records and he said this is where you do this this is where you do that and that was the first time I actually properly learned rocking um, then went to New York stayed there for a couple of months uh, stayed with Fano from Mastermind okay, yeah, Rock yeah. Rockers um, the original one of the founding members of Mastermind Rockers and he taught me his style which is really uh, raw uh, not, not, not polished but but one of the best, finest styles that I've ever seen. Um, learned from a lot of rockers, so from all the crews, 
Um, for me, it's about staying true to yourself. So regardless of what crew I learn from, I'm always going to be La Familia till the day I die. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, that, that's not in existence anymore, you know? Um, that the whole thinking behind crews is, is, is gone. Yes. Um, for me, it's about... Or few and far between. Exactly. Few, few and far, far between. Yeah, that's right. For In the UK, it's... I Virtually non-existent. Not yeah, non-existent, yeah, yeah. you know. You call yourself a crew, you don't even know what your middle name is. Mm. I, I grew up with Chris from La Familia. Yes, um, GG. Yeah. GG yeah. To, to, to some people, one of the best footwork guys. Um, Most humble guys. Yeah. To be straight, fair. Straight up humble guy and one of the best guys to, you know, talk about life to, mm -hmm. you know, share your problems. He's always going to be there. But uh, you've got people like Ken from uh, La Familia mm -hmm. that's in, that lives in Germany, Cologne. He's, he's one of the true ones at the moment. Uh, he's in IB, the Incredible Breakers. Yeah. Uh, he's also down with us. He's taking rock into the next level. So really, you shouldn't be interviewing me. Uh, I, I say that with you know, humility. You should be uh, interviewing Ken from La Familia. Yeah. Um, but, but him, he's good. And then you've got Patrick, who's a new La Familia. Been, been training with me for three years now. Uh, he's, he's got some, some nice jerks, no one's ever seen him, and that's how it should be. It's not about getting in the, in the camera all the time, yeah. it's about just training, developing yourself, reaching your goals for your personal self, and then if the time arises and you want to burn someone, then you say, okay, you want to burn me, step up, uh, you've got some money, put the money down, if you haven't, okay, I'll battle you for your shirt, I'm not going to just battle you and show you my skills for nothing. That's how I feel about rocking. Yeah. A lot of people... <laughs> She's a bit like the traditional way of breaking, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's lost now. Yeah, of course. Um, of in, course. in the rock scene, uh, you know, I'm not in it. There's, there's, there's forums on it, which is fantastic. There's an exchange of ideas. Everybody records clips and puts it online. I think that's pathetic. Mm. You know, um, you, you need to keep it true. If you're going to rock, then rock. And then if, when the time is ready to battle, then you battle. Um, it's just a dance. I don't know how many times I'll say it. La Familia now is a rocking crew. That's right. One hundred percent a rocking crew. Um, no, we still got people that break, breaking mm. it. Um, they're not really active anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, you have got some that own Soul Mavericks, which is good for them. You know, you're doing their thing. Best luck of to, to Manny and uh, Spin. Yeah, Spin. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, we always meet up. We can go and watch a movie and just chill out. Back in the day, you know, we used to just train. Yeah. <laughs> so things have changed slightly. Yeah, well, it's, got, um, it's got different motivations yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, different motivations. But, but La Familia now, for me, is, um, is trying to create a new chapter, start a movement in the UK, perhaps. I'm not mm. saying it will happen. Yeah. Perhaps start a movement that will involve the youth, um, try to educate them, give them a bit of knowledge about dancing and you know, get them excited about something that, which would make them positive about life, but ultimately give them some direction. So that's what I want for La Familia in the future. Um, yeah. We've got few active members at the moment in, the, in and around Europe that are doing doing these things already. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but you know it's not about blowing your own trumpet. The gang style outlaw form of rocking mm -hmm. is one way of rocking. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that you you rock to all kinds of music. You like to rock to house. That's right. You know, and whatever feels good and makes you want to rock, you rock. What I think is important is that you perhaps start from the base. So you start off with how it was done. So if you listen to the, the classics first, take your time, you learn that, you know the songs inside out, then you have the, the, the rocking inside you. Yeah. And that, so that like dance to the whole song. Yeah, dance and, on, yeah. That takes years to develop. Yeah. Um, you won't get it overnight. You would have to keep on practicing. Once you've got that in you instilled, then you move on to house or, or you want to dance to Bollywood music or whatever or yeah. some Sega Bollywood music. Bollywood rock. No, I call it Sega Rock. So Sega Rock. Sega Rock. So Sega rock. Mauritian music is Sega. So you want to put a bit of Sega in there, you put it in. You, yeah. Everything has to be from yourself. Yes. So, but you learn the foundation. So I've learned the foundation from a lot of the originals. Uh, Fano, um, you know, uh, Gary, Gar Gary White Boy. Gary White Boy, yeah. Um, Dash, um, you know, uh, Brian from Incredible Breakers, Sammy from Incredible Breakers that, that have taken Rock into the next level. Um, and, and you've also got UK inspirations for me as well. Okay, who are they? Uh, Patrick Cesar yeah. is one of my biggest. Uh, Basil, 
Uh, yeah. Sometimes he tries to teach me popping. It's, it, it makes me laugh. So I do it for humour. The, way, the, way, the yeah. way that no, he no, pops? Or? No, the way I try to pop. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, there's, there's things that, you know, you've you, you got to laugh at yourself sometimes. You can't take yeah, yourself too seriously. Um, but then you've got Warren Crooks as well. Okay. Uh, massive inspiration. Used to train with me in Finsbury Park. That's For those that want to kill me, that's where I live. <laughs> nice area, man. It's, it's, it's up and coming, yeah. Well, Crowd Chen's know. quite nice. But yeah, I, I think yeah, you can dance to up rock into any music. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I think I think the thing is is knowing the the essence of it, mm-hmm. and the it's a bit like playing a game. Yeah. You need to know the rules. You yeah. know, you have to know the rules. So I had I had Charlie Uprock break it down uh, for me as we were driving over Brooklyn Bridge, uh, and he he broke it down in. You got your jerks. Yes. So you do that to the break of the song. You got your freestyle, which you do, do to the rest. Uh, you do your burns. You can do jerk and burns, but the burns are where you put the permanent down and you make them look rubbish and you make fun of them. So you've got humorous burns, you've got serious hardcore burns, and then you've got triple burns, quadruple burns that no one, no one does anymore. No one does. Full yeah. stop. But um, but you have to know your music. So those are the four elements to rock in. Um, quite simple. But it takes a lot of practice. I think a lot of people, Slammer, they, they start off liking rocking. I've, I've seen it so many times. Yeah. They start off, they say, yeah, Ribs, I want to learn. Um, they, they come around my house. I, I, I give them a lot of knowledge. I give them footage. And then I, I turn around and they're no longer doing it. They, they've gone back to b-boying. Yeah. Because everybody's doing that b-boying. Yeah. But now more famous or, I don't know, well-known b-boys are coming out doing rocking now or trying to. Yeah. I have to say trying to rock. Yeah. Um, because I, I can't rock, but I, but I know how to rock better than these guys. Um, they, they're trying to rock, but they're killing the dance. It's not supposed to look the same. Everyone's yeah. looking the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's packaging it. Yep. Getting Ibs on, on the show was something that, like, you know, that was just a little chat at the bar, man. We, we, we caught five minutes. Like, he, he came through for a drink after work. And for me, I just wanted to highlight the fact that not only is rocking something that's super significant, Ibs is super significant in the UK with it because there is no one in the UK that can rock like Ibs. Right. There's probably a handful of people that can in Europe, maybe. He might differ to, <laughs> he might have a difference of opinion. But keeping it more humble and broad, you know, there are other rockers out there that have learnt the way he's learnt. They've gone to New York, they've, they've slept on people's couches and on their floors and learnt the traditional way to rock. If you watch Ibs rock and you watch him throw burns, the energy is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It's so on point, you know? And I'm not licking his conkers right now. Like, seriously, it's so on point. You watch him, he can most definitely rock. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's something that, again, through the show, we want to highlight, you know? There's, there's a lot of people doing great things, even in our lives, that we know personally around us. You know, whether they be true friends or acquaintances, there's a lot of people doing great things. And there's a lot of information and entertainment to be captured, do you know what I mean? So yeah, of that, that's like, you know, if we look at like, you know, moving forward with, with more interviews, I mean, we're, we're already inundated with people even wanting to do interviews now, yeah. which is incredible. Yeah, that's amazing, that's amazing. This is the Larry Show. Show. Just, just to let you know, that's right.